Good morning again. Would you all join me? I know you applauded earlier for the first video, but would you join me in uh, thanking our pastor for preparing those videos so that we could highlight the laity this morning? As I said, it's good to be here this morning. It's good to be with you all. And before I start into other things, I'd like to say quickly that the scripture for this morning, if you want to find it in the Bible, in the Pew Bible, um, a matter of fact, in the Pew Bible, in the New Testament, it's page 15. It's Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 32. And if you don't recognize that, it will be very familiar to you in a few minutes. Um, before I get into that, I'd like to say a few other things. I will, or I have been for this year, um, as of the beginning of January, I have been the, the lay leader here at McKenzie First, and I have enjoyed that immensely. But I, it, it, a time has come for me to step down from that position. And some of you, maybe all of you already know this, but this is making it official. So I, I'll be stepping down from that position it's a demanding position. It requires a lot of time. It requires a lot of thought. And also, for myself and my family, there are some possible opportunities and uh, career job opportunities that could end up taking us away from McKinsey. And we don't look forward to moving from McKinsey, but uh, I see some of you shaking your head. But uh, it's, it's part of life, I suppose. So uh, this is a good time. It's just before charge conference. And like we said, Charge Conference will be this Tuesday evening. And so, a little plug for Charge Conference. All members should attend, I think, uh, my opinion. It, it lets you know what's going on within the church and what the church sees as its goals for the upcoming year. So if you can, if you at all can, come. And I say that, and I'm not going to be here because my son has a flag football game. But, <laughs> but you should come. Um, also, Jennifer Barker, who normally sings in our choir and is a just a great idea person for the the ministries of the church uh, she will or has been nominated to step into this role into the role of lay leader next year and so barring something strange happening that we don't expect she will be voted and confirmed on uh, on Tuesday night at the charge conference and, and Jennifer will become the lay leader in January of next year uh, I am stepping down from this position, but before I had this position, most of you know I was busy with things around here, doing different stuff and being involved in the ministries of the church. That will continue. Uh, I have no, no intention of, of pulling completely away from anything or anything else. This is just stepping away from some of those specific duties. So, like I say, I was an active member of the congregation before being the lay leader. And I think being an active member is kind of what Laity Sunday is all about. It's the ministry of the laity. See, most of the work, work, ministry of the church gets done by the laity. And now that's not to slight Brother Jason in any way or any of the other clergy members that we know or, or anyone else. But the fact is there are a lot more of us than there are of them. Uh, I mean, that's just... It's a simple math problem. There's a lot more of us. And it reminded me of a quote. Whenever I was thinking along those lines, it reminded me of this quote. And I thought to myself, well, it's an Abraham Lincoln quote. I mean, it, we've all heard tons of quotes by Abraham Lincoln. And so I go looking to make sure I get the wording just right. I go looking on, on the Internet to make sure I get the wording just perfect. And first thing I find is, this quote has been attributed to Abraham Lincoln, but he didn't really say it. <laughs> and so I thought, well, I'll see who did say it. This will be a good educational moment for everyone. So I look, and I look, and I can't find anybody who said it. So I'm saying it this morning. Someone has said it in the past, and, and I like the quote, so we're going we're gonna to use it anyway. It says, God must have loved the common people. He made so many of them. I like that. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of a, a, a closeness to God that, that regular folks have. And like I say, there are lots of us, and there are only a few clergy. So 
an active laity can always do more than the clergy, just by sheer numbers. So as I said, our scripture this morning is Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 32. Join me in reading that. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was, almost, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. This is the word of God for the people of God. So you may remember, it hasn't been that long ago since Brother Jason brought us this same scripture. And when we had that Sunday, that service, and if you don't remember, go to the YouTube page for the church. Another little plug. Um, Check that out because that's on there. The children's sermon from that morning is on there. And it was really great because we had blue tarps laid down here on the steps on front, and we had, had a boat sitting down here, and we had all the kids come down and pile into the boat, and we thought we would break the boat. And so it was, it was very full, and we, it, we reenacted the, the moments that, that go on here where, where Peter cries out to Jesus, and Jesus calls Peter from the boat, and Peter starts to sink, and Jesus pulls him back out. And it was a, it was a nice a good representation, a really good visual representation of what, what we actually understand went on from reading the Scriptures. And it's a wonderful story. I mean, it's a, it's a wonderful moment that teaches us a lot of things. But one in particular, and one of the most common ones that we hear, is that Jesus reaches down to us in our times of need, whenever we feel like we're sinking, and He pulls us back out of the turmoil. And he helps us to return to the safety of the boat. But I think there's something we've been missing in this story all along. And it pertains to Laity Sunday. It pertains to the laity. It pertains to men and women, lay people. See, we all know, and we've heard it over and over and over again, it's been, it's been pointed out to us repeatedly that Peter first calls out to Jesus before Jesus calls out to Peter. So Jesus didn't call Peter first. And we could get lost in all the discussions of the deity of Jesus and whether or not Jesus already knew that Peter would call out to him. And so uh, Peter, or Jesus would have called out to Peter to come to him on the water. Even if Jesus hadn't said anything, we can get lost in that stuff. Those things don't really matter for the purposes of our discussion this morning. What matters is that Peter first called out to Jesus. And this is why. Let me ask you this question. What would have happened if the other disciples had seen Peter step out onto the water and they had also called out to Jesus and asked him to call them out of the boat as well? Let me ask you an even more pointed question. What would happen today if you called out to Jesus and asked him to call you out of where you are? Or what would happen... If you called out to Jesus from right where you're sitting, right there in the pew, right there in the choir loft, and you said, Lord, command me to come to where you are. Can you imagine that? I mean, seriously, can you really imagine what this church, every church, would be like if each one of us said that? If we said things like, Lord, I want to feed people that I know are hungry. If we didn't just say, what do you want me to do? If we said, I see this need, and I said, I want to feed people who are hungry. Lord, I want to visit people who are lonely. Lord, I want to bring people to Christ who aren't like me. 
See, those are the places where Christ is. Or in the case of the last one, where Christ wants to be. And these are also places where you, every one of you, can make a difference today. Right now, in McKenzie, Tennessee. I'll give you some examples. Meals on Wheels. Most of you are familiar with Meals on Wheels. It operates every Saturday. It feeds 30 to 40 people, depending on how many folks they've got on, on the lists at the time. And it provides a meal to folks who could really use the meal. Um, sometimes it provides a meal to folks who could use the visit from someone. If you would like to experience Christ's love through feeding others, things like that, that's your opportunity. There are plenty of chances within that ministry for you to do things. You can cook, you can deliver meals, you can, can do all sorts of things involved with that, and nobody is going to tell you you can't. No one is going to say, you know what, we really don't need you because we want everybody to be a part of the ministry of the church. Another one is we have lots, maybe not lots, but there are lonely people right here among us in our community, in our church, and even our families. This is a ministry opportunity that, opportunity that can be done by anyone because you don't have to be really physically able to be able to do this. I'm not saying that you have to hop in the car and go visit everybody. What I'm suggesting is that all you have to do is pick up a phone and call somebody you know is lonely and talk to them for a few minutes. It's not going to take that much of your time, and it'll mean a lot to them. Or, and this is something that I've thought quite a bit about, and this is a challenge to anybody who feels lonely. If any of you feel lonely, this is my challenge to you. Sometime in the next couple of days, whenever you have a chance to get alone and talk to God, whether it's during a time when you pray regularly or whether you read your Bible regularly or whatever it is, take a minute and ask God to reveal to you five people that are lonely. And make a list. And it may not come to you. I mean, it may be an epiphany to where all of a sudden you have five people that just pop right into your head. And maybe not. Maybe you think of one person. Maybe you don't think of anybody. Maybe two days from now, whenever you're working or you're eating dinner or something like that, then somebody's name occurs to you. If that happens, write their name down. And then make it your purpose, make it your passion to call on those people once a week or once every two weeks or however often you decide and check on them. Talk about their lives. Talk about your life. And before long, what will happen is you'll become invested in those people. You'll start to care about how those people are doing, how things turn out for those people, how their ups and downs, their lives. And once we become invested in each other, we get connected to each other. We start to care about what happens. And I know whenever we start talking about connecting with each other, caring about, caring about what happens to one another, it, really getting involved in one another's lives, I know you're going to say, or some of you will say, that you're against that. And I know you're going to say that it's because you're afraid you're going to get burned. And let me tell you right now, I can, I can ease your fears. Don't be afraid you will get burned. You will get burned. Anytime you start to invest in other people, things are not going to turn out the way you think they should. That doesn't mean they turn out wrong. It just means that they don't turn out the way you had set in your mind. That happens a lot. Uh, that happens a lot, and it's easy for us to become disgusted almost whenever things like that happen. When things don't turn out the way we plan, it's easy for us to say, I'm done. I I'm not doing this anymore. But think about this. Recall with me Jesus' words. You'll remember that we're called by Jesus. We're, we're, he refers to us as workers in the field. And we're called to the harvest. Now, notice in that, that there, it doesn't say any time, any of that portion of Scripture, whenever Jesus is talking about being called to the harvest, He does not say, so go out and bring in 20 bushels, or bring five people to church, or any of those things. 
there's no quota set. We're simply called to work. And see, that's where we start to kind of understand that maybe it's not about the outcome. Maybe it's about the action. We're called to be busy within God's kingdom. And I mentioned in a little list earlier that you may or may not remember at this point, I talked about bringing people to Christ. And when we're challenged a few times a year on special occasions, on on specific Sundays like a back-to-church Sunday or a a bring-a-friend Sunday or, or whatever, we almost always say the same stuff whenever we hear those things over, you know, hear those calls to do those things over and over again. We'll say things like, well, I don't know who to invite, or everybody I know already goes to church. Let's look at it like this. We often think about how other people have made us feel or have wronged us, and we get really worked up over it, and we allow ourselves to stew over those things at at how unbelievable people can be. We allow ourselves to think of them, well, they did that because that's just a bad person. Or they're a victim of their circumstances. They would be different if they weren't in, in the middle of the circumstance that they're in. Or probably the easiest one for us all to, to, to I guess, justify, probably the hardest one to stay away from, I guess is another way to say it, is that they're victims of their own bad choices. Well, they made these decisions. Nobody made them do this. Nobody made them do that. They just turned out this way. They did that to themselves. These are self-inflicted wounds. And that's why they're rotten people. That's why they do nasty things. And then we go on with our own lives, and we're thankful that we only have to deal with them every once in a while. When we see them at the grocery store, or when we run into them at a ball game, or when we, I hope, not see them at church. This part really hits home for me. Because... And because of some, some things that have happened with me recently, I was, I, I was really thinking about this. And, and this thought came to my mind, uh, especially geared around what we've been talking about this morning. Let me ask you this question. When is the last time that you looked at a person, at that person, that person that grinds your gears, and you said to God, that person's coming to church with me next Sunday? Now... I understand that that doesn't work in every situation. But in a lot of them it will. In those uncomfortable moments whenever things are going on and there's tension and you you don't even want to see that person again, the last thing you want to do is invite them to church. But maybe that's exactly what you're supposed to do. Maybe that's exactly what it looks like. Maybe that's what it looks like when we cry out to Jesus, when we're riding those rough waters of life. And instead of cowering down in the bottom of the boat and waiting on the storm to pass, we say, Lord, command me to step out of the safety of this boat, the safety of my comfortable life, and call me to become invested in the lives of others. See, that's what Laity Sunday is all about. It's not about the clergy at all. It's about those common folks, like we talked about earlier. It's about those of us who put in long hours at our jobs or on a farm or with community organizations that we're invested with or any other situation that we've decided to devote ourselves to during a plain old week, a regular everyday time. And then we ask God to call us into the places where he needs us, to volunteer at a hospital, to visit prisoners at the county jail, to coach kids sports, to lead Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts, to send cards to nursing home residents, to sit and talk with college students or troubled teens, or one of a hundred other things that that we could stand here and and talk about this morning. Or or maybe it's to do something kind towards that neighbor or that acquaintance who makes you want to scream. See, the main idea is the same. Whether it's something you're already doing or something God is in the process of laying on your heart now, for for you to do, for something God's laying on on your heart for you to do, Know that the core of Laity Sunday, of every day as lay people, is showing Christ wherever he's placed us and asking him to call us out of the boat and serve wherever he wants us to serve. God be the glory. Amen.